Filters and EQs are probably the most used effects in music production. Would it be for mixing and mastering, sound designing or live performances? Filters do a very simple task really. They cut some frequencies of the sound you're designing, so they are at the core of subtractive synthesis. They can either be used to remove unwanted frequencies from a sound or to leave more space for other layers or other tracks in a mix. In this video, we'll see a lot of different types of filter, each allowing you to cut or lower frequencies in a different way, so you can hear how they sound. But just before we begin, here are a couple of things that are important to mention. Because filters will remove frequencies from a sound, they work better if you start with a sound that is rich in harmonics like a sound made with FM synthesis or with a lot of distortion, for example. Filters won't work particularly well on the sine wave, for example, as the sine wave is only one frequency, so that's not a lot of content to cut to shape the sound. And in Serum, you can choose the type of filter you want to use here and then choose what you want it to filter. Oscillator A, oscillator B or noise. You also have another filter in the FX section and another extra filter in the distortion effect. So filters generally come with two main parameters, the cutoff, which is the frequency where the filter starts affecting the sound, and the resonance, also called Q, which amplifies more or less the frequency around the cutoff point. The low pass filter, also called the high cut filter, is probably the most common. It will cut all the frequencies above the cutoff point, keeping only the lowest part of the sound. That generally makes the sound smoother, and with the resonance you can control how much the frequencies are boosted at the cutoff point. Though this filter doesn't cut abruptly every frequencies above the cutoff point, it cuts them progressively more and more the further you go from it. So it cuts them with kind of a slope. You'll see sometimes a number attached to the low pass filter, like LP12, LP18 or LP24. It refers to the steepness of this slope. The higher the number, the more abrupt the cut. For a low pass 12, for instance, the 12 stands for 12 dB per octave. So a frequency 1 octave above the cutoff point would be lowered by 12 dB, and a frequency 2 octaves above the cutoff point would be lowered by 24 dB. This gives you an idea of the slope of the filter. So here are a couple of examples of low pass filters. The high pass filter, also called low cut filter, will cut all the frequencies below the cutoff point and keep only the higher ones. This usually makes the sound thinner and sometimes harsher. It is useful to keep only the high end of the cymbals, for example, or to keep only the texture of one sound to layer it with another sound. Similarly to the low pass filter, you can sometimes see a number attached to the high pass filter. It also refers to the abruptness of its slope. The bandpass filter cuts the frequencies above and below the cutoff point while boosting the frequencies around it. The resonance here controls how much these frequencies are boosted. A common way of using this filter is to make a telephone effect when it is put on a voice recording, for example. The notch filter, also called band cut filter, will cut a band of frequencies around the cutoff point. The resonance here will set the width of this band. A higher resonance will result in a narrower band being cut and a lower resonance will result in a wider band. The notch filter is useful to get rid of a narrow slice of frequencies to remove a small part of the sound you don't want. I personally like to move the cutoff point while a note is playing, with the LFO for instance, to add movement to the sound. There are actually two types of comp filters. There are fit-forward and there are feedback comp filters. Let's see the fit-forward form first. 
the feed forward comp filter is like a combination of several notch filters. It will be a succession of several points that will cut several bands of frequencies. They are sometimes called flanger comp filters when the frequencies that are cut are multiples of its first frequency. So this would be the first frequency, this one would be at two times this frequency, this one three times the first frequency, and so on, following the harmonic series. And other forward comp filters are sometimes called also phaser comp filters, but we'll see that when we'll talk about flangers and phasers. The cutoff knob would move the series of notches and the resonance will set the depth. So these comp filters can be used to cut a frequency with its harmonics. The feedback form of the comp filter will work in the opposite way. It will cut all the frequency and let through only the frequencies around the cutoff points and its harmonics. So it's like a series of narrow bandpass filters. This type of filter can be very cool to use on white notes to let a particular note go through for example, to have a kind of breathy tone. Formant filters are designed to mimic vowel sounds such as A, E, E, O, or U. It does that with a series of bandpass filters, usually between 2 and 5. They let through only some frequencies selected depending on the vowel we want to reproduce. Additional points will refine the precision of the vowel. You can see here a more precise chart giving the frequencies of 5 points for 5 different vowels for A, E, I, O, and U for 5 different types of voices, from the lower to the highest, bass, tenor, contratenor, alto, and soprano. If you want to see it more in detail, you'll find it in the description. For example, let's try to make a form and filter with several bandpass filters. Let's do it with three points. I will have an oscillator with a sawtooth waveform because it's rich in harmonic, and then I will make an effect track with three channels, with one filter on each channel. This way the sound will go in parallel in each of these channels and will hear the three outputs at the same time, each output giving one frequency from one filter. So I will take three frequencies from the chart for A, for a tenor voice for example, and I will copy each of them on a different bandpass filter. So here is how it sounds like now. We can also hear what it does with a different oscillator. And there I did exactly the same thing with different values for different vowels to see how they sound. The high shelf filter will boost or lower all the frequencies above the cutoff points equally. It is not that common as a standalone plugin, but it is more often seen in equalizers, but we'll see those in a minute. The resonance here will change the steepness of the transition slope between the boosted part and the rest of the signal. And then you'd have a gain knob to set the strength of the boost or the cut. A high shelf filter can be nice to add a bit of brilliance or to reduce the harshness of a sound a bit if you don't want to cut the high frequencies completely. The low shelf, similarly to the high shelf, will boost or lower all the frequencies below the cutoff point. It's also pretty rare as a standalone, but it's more frequent in an EQ. A tilt filter, also called tilt EQ, is like a combination of high shelves and low shelf filters. It will either boost the trebles and lower the bases, or boost the bases and lower the trebles. The cutoff frequency acts like a pivot point, then you'd have a gain knob to set the strength of the effect, and the resonance will set the size of the slope of the transition.
all pass filter is a bit particular because it has what we call a flat frequency response, which means it doesn't cut or boost any frequency. Instead, it delays the signal a little, by an amount relative to the frequencies it delays. That means that the base frequencies can be delayed differently than the higher frequencies. They are not really used as standalone filters, but they are used inside phaser effects, so I just wanted to let you know that they exist. We'll talk more about them when we talk about phasers. Parametric EQs are like a combination of several filters. It represented with a screen representing the frequency spectrum, with the lower frequencies on the left and the higher ones on the right, and there's a line on which you can add points. Each point you add is a new filter, and you can choose if it acts like a low pass, a high pass, a high or low shaft, or a point EQ. Each point will then have three settings. The frequency, which is similar to the cutoff point of the filter, it determines where the point is on the frequency spectrum, the gain, which determines how much the frequency around the point are lowered or boosted, and the resonance of a noted Q, which which determines how wide or narrow is the frequency range affected by that point. It is one of the most versatile and most used effects in both the sound design phase and the mixing phase to make every sound of the track sound well together. A good rule of thumb is to lower frequencies more than you boost them. It is often advised to cut the frequencies you don't want more than boosting the ones you like. Another good rule of thumb is to use a high gain value with a high resonance and a little gain value with a small resonance. So if you want to cut a frequency drastically, it's often better to use a high resonance with a narrow range of action. And if you use a small resonance value to act on a wider range, it's often better to be subtle with the gain knob. With this in mind, an equalizer is also an excellent tool to dissect a sound to see what it's made of. When you use an EQ, you can take a point with a rather high resonance and a high gain and sweep it across the frequency range. It is like a magnifier to hear each part of the sound. If some region sounds too harsh, too loud or too dissonant, you can lower them. Step by step, it's a good way to really carve your sound. Some EQ even allow you to hear only what is affected by the point you're moving. On Ableton's EQ8, it's this button here. Some EQs also allow you to process differently the center and the sides. Using a high-pass filter on the sides is a good way to ensure the bass part of your sound stays in mono, which is often what you want. And some EQs also allow you to process differently the left channel and the right channel, which is always good to enhance the stereo wideness of your sound. Graphic EQ are another type of EQ where the frequency spectrum is sliced into several bands. You would then have a slider on each one to control how much you want to boost or cut the frequencies in that band. The bands are already set, so you don't have control over the frequency of each point, nor over the resonance of each point, which is often fixed. But this kind of EQ often allow you to have a lot more point to play with. 